Samsung 8K TV. This is the QN800A, 65 inch model. Uh, check below for timestamps. I'll get dimensions and so on and timestamp them in the description. Top of the box, we can see the One Connect box there. Part of the pedestal base plastic trim cover and remote and instruction book pack. Remote and instruction book pack. Big heavy one connect. Pack. Part of the pedestal stand. Trim cover there. Quick setup guide. Just gonna get the poly out the top first. The box should then just lift off, he says. Bit more poly on the sides. So that is the metal part of that pedestal base. Heavy cradle for the one connect box. That's a quick look at the TV itself in its packaging. So far it looks pretty similar to a QN900A. Remote control and instruction book pack. Don't go into it. One connect lead there for wall mounting. He's about two meters long. And we've got a short one connect lead as well for its stand configuration. Both the same thing, two different lamps. I'm going to mount it on the stand first, then I'm going to take it off, mount it on a wall for the showroom. Treble A batteries for the standard remotes. That's that one there. Get this remote out and a close up in a moment. That's the smart remote with a solar panel or solar cell. IEC kettle lead or mains lead, right angled connector. Guide to the smart remote, user manual, nothing in there of any use really, so go to the e-manual built in and the television itself. So I'll start with the standard remote, it's got power on and off, source or input button at the top, channel numbers, teletext, not in the UK on this TV, pre-channel to your previous channel, volume up and down, channels up and down, mute, channel list, quick access, Netflix, Prime and Samsung TV Plus, guide button, cursor arrows up, down, left, right and enter, return or exit, colour buttons there for different apps and services, quick access to the settings, info, audio description and subtitles button, play, stop, pause, fast forward and rewind for apps or media playback, model code if that shows up, you can order one of these off Amazon or anywhere if you don't get one in your country. Onto the smart remote there. So we see we've got power on and off, voice command button. That takes you to multiple other buttons, say numbered colored buttons and so on. Multi view button, like picture in picture. Cursor arrows left, right, up, down and enter. Back button, home button, playing pause, volume rocks up and down and in for mute. Channels rock up and down and in for guide. Quick access, Netflix, Prime, Samsung TV Plus. Flip it over, we've got that solar cell on the back there. So you can leave it face down, it will keep itself topped up. If charge runs all the way out, oh, we can just see we've got that USB type so you can fully recharge it. Quick look at the quick setup guide. So we've got a list of inputs there on the side. There's some of the contents and bits included and where they're used. Two of you to lay it on a large flat surface, larger than the screen. I'm going to use the box and the polythene sheet it comes with. Attaching part of the pedestal stand there and here. All the screws and sliding that cradle in. We'll have a look at those bits in a moment. And again, if we're doing it on the stand, it shows to use that short one connect lead there, plugging it into the one connect box, having it on that cradle. So the one connects behind the TV as it shows here. Turn it on obviously on the remote control. Also, quick warning there, don't squeeze the screen. Flip it over, 
got dimensions there for the 65Q8 and 65Q900A. What the dimensions are and where they relate there. Also weight factors. And again, attaching your piece of mount arms for a standard flat wall bracket. You can also use the slim fit wall mount. Moving on to the One Connect box. It's about the size of a PS4, roughly. So you get a quick close up of the connections there. So we've got LAN or wired internet in digital optical audio out, twin sat for watch and record, aerial in, CI card slot reader, two USB there at five volt half amp, HDMI one, two, three and four. HDMI three is enhanced audio return channel. And then we've got another USB there rated at one amp for hard drives and so on to connect. That's for our one connect lead to go in. So with a short one, for example, it clicks into place there says like so we can just see if I hold it in shot I've got that tab then I can squeeze to remove the lead so this is the only lead that actually goes to the TVs all the power HDMI signals are all carried through that to the television turn it onto its side we can see where that IEC mains lead goes in as well like it says so there we go IEC mains in there and it also tucks into that groove to keep it tidy at the side. Top of it, we've got that nice textured sort of finish, pretty much the same as the Q900. Next pack in here, little cable cover that goes on the back there to cover the cables, and obviously we've got the cradle for it to sit on. This is the cradle that attaches to the pedestal on the back of the TV. Two packs of M4 screws for the pedestal stand to attach to the TV. Quick mock-up. One connect box on it there. And we've got that cable cover to go on the back. That's it. So it keeps our cables tidy. We can see we can, we've can. we got access there for the mains to come out. We can just see where the connections would come out there. Well, the pedestal base itself piece of mild steel powder coated black with a textured finish got through holes there for it screw into the TV and to its neck so in this one pedestal neck and some more M4 screws so another pack of M4 screws there TV is now laid on a large flat surface, a box with a polythene sheet supply. First thing I've got is this plastic neck part of the pedestal. So that we can see we've got some hooks there, two key slots, four threaded holes. That simply plonks down onto there, slides down into those key holes. So four screws into the holes. Quickly wind those in. Next, we've got the cradle. Also, again, we've got this sort of hook part here and a slot on the cradle there. That should just locate above there. And then we've got four through holes, one, two, three, four there. Threaded holes there. So again, I can drop my four screws into those holes. Quickly wind those in. Next part is the actual pedestal base, that large piece of powder coated mild steel. Again, four through holes in this, threaded holes in there. So there is a slot here, I don't know if I can make this show up. And it just simply goes in like so, and into place. And four more holes, there, there, there and there. Four more screws to drop in. Quickly wind those in. And last but not least, the One Connect will place and hold on this cradle. I'm going to tip the TV up though, because it's going to get kind of heavy now to tip up with all this on the back. So I'll tip it up, put that on. 
stood the TV up for the final part just because it gets quite heavy so it's obviously easier to turn it over with less weight on it. I'm going to put my one connect lead in. Mains, like I showed earlier, pushes into there, tucks down the groove, goes into the cradle this way, like that. So final bit, cables in there coming out, one connect goes into the TV. In the packet, there's a little tab there. We just push in and we can pull out just to secure that one connect lead. Okay, so I've guided that mains lead out here. You can see we've still got access to the other connections. One connect leads in with its little plastic tab. Do it push TV over. There we go. Plastic cover. Ooh. Just on there to cover those. Tidies it up. That's just a quick look at the assembled article from the back. We can see we've got all the speakers and woofers around, even speakers emitting from the sides as well. It's all part of that object tracking sound. It looks pretty much so far identical to the QN900A. Onto the dimensions. Pedestal width, 36 centimetres or 14 and a quarter inches. Whatever it stood on to the bottom of the TV, about seven centimetres or two and three quarter inches. Width wise, 65 inch model. 144 and a half centimetres or 56 and three quarter inches. Flip it around, 400 mil by 300 mil piece amounts. From the bottom of the TV to the middle of the first piece amount hole, it's about 305 millimetres. 33 centimetres wide or 13 inch depth. 29 and a half centimeters or just over 11 and a half inches thickness or height wise it's about 42 millimeters thick and doing the depth i have excluded leads plugging in the back here so you can probably add an extra 40 mil 50 mil or so depth for that one connect lead coming out the back i've actually now taken it off its pedestal base because it's going to be in a showroom on the wall itself I'm not going to make another video of me putting this one on the wall. I'll put a card somewhere to click on. It's got the full Q900A, QN900A wall mount installed. It's exactly the same thing. Securely mounted on the wall. Just going to get the gump off the front. We would say peely peely if they didn't stick plastic bits on the side. A bit of plastic. Like the other Samsungs, either set up with your smartphone, which is quick and easy, as it suggests. It will copy your password and account information over to the TV and Wi-Fi passwords as well, or remote control step by step. You can just see my remote pair in there, that's the smart remote. Step by step, UK. Pop your pin in for future setups. Okay. 
tells me what's connected so if you've got other devices consoles recorders sky whatever connect them turn them on now i'm just going terrestrial and digital for my aerial wired internet connection verified going to agree to all say okay there probably will be an update in which case I'll pause and come back so we say now and I'll pause Okay, update is complete. So get more from your screen with your Samsung account. I've got a Samsung account myself. I would log in now. So log in there if you wish to. You can also log in later. Pop your postcode in for your regional stuff. Quick summary there of the devices found. So my wired, internet and my scan channels. So select your voice to get what you want. I'm going to go for Bixby as it's in store. Discover a faster way to link your apps there. So if I went to that, for example, on Prime, it would give me a code. Go to Prime on my phone or PC and go pair device, pop the code in. It links it that way to save you time. And here, adaptive picture. I'm not going to put it on in the store but it should optimize the sound and the picture uh, to suit the content you're watching. I'm going to say later for that. Cool. Quick thing I'm going to do before I go any further is just adjust the settings quickly. Picture I'm going to leave as standard, down to general. Power and energy saving, I'm going to turn off. Uh, I'll turn off brightness optimization for now. That's the auto backlight sensor, just so I can keep it the same while I'm doing a demo. In your home, you may have it on. It'll adjust its brightness depending on ambient light. Motion lighting I'm turning off. That's reducing the backlight in to save a bit of energy, but it sacrifice, sacrifices the picture in the meantime. Auto TV power off I'm gonna turn off. That's an inactivity standby. I'll just come out of the menu. Okay, so on screen now, just got a Freeview HD channel stream in there. I'm gonna turn the sound up so we can hear the audio. Our Angela Merkel's conservative CDU are facing the very real threat of being ousted with the Social Democrat SDP in the lead as we head into the final stretch. Such is the worry within Angela Merkel's party that yesterday the outgoing Chancellor weighed in with an unusually blunt attack on her opponents. The best way forward for our country is a government led by the CDU and the CSU, with Armin Laschet as Chancellor, because his government will stand for stability, reliability, moderation and balance, which is exactly what Germany needs. So let me remind you of the key figures in this election, battling it out to become the next Chancellor. Angela Merkel's chosen Much success to get into. Let's talk to journalist Emmanuel Chez in Berlin. Emmanuel, nice to see you. Um, we were talking actually just last night about the Canadian election and the threat to Justin Trudeau, who called a snap election despite the fact he was a long way ahead in the polls. And I was asking the question whether it is wise to call an election in between two spikes in a pandemic. And I wonder if that is how it's playing out for the CDU in Germany. Well, you know, Armie Lasher, the Conservative... OK, so that's just a bit of normal TV. I'm going to check out the inbuilt retail demo. So to the home, settings, general, external, oh, system manager even. I'm going to go on to the retail mode.
So back to the home mode. Okay, so we're back onto the live TV feed here. Pretty cool. I've also signed the TV in to our shop Samsung account so I can use the voice control. I've used Bixby because it works fine in here. I can hold down the voice command button and say things like Netflix. Exit. Or I could say BBC iPlayer. Exit. Probably the best use for this is searching for things on YouTube so you don't have to cast from your phone or type on the on-screen keyboard. So I can say YouTube Frontiers of Pandora Avatar. There we go, which is handy because I'm going to say credit to Ubisoft for this. I'm going to try that as a quick sort of game trailer demo. So I'll have a quick look and again, credit to Ubisoft. So again, credit to Ubisoft for that game trailer demo. So YouTube Ronaldo 8K Football. Hey. So try a quick football demo, see if we've got any DSC on there. I think it looks pretty clean. Stadium in Singapore. They tore and take on the Italian champions, Juventus. Just stop there, it should be an 8K. There we go. Tony out the bureau to their starting 11. Juventus versus Tottenham Hotspur, a fixture many on in this kind of area. Human Soccer Spurs. Clark's in. 
in terms of form from that moment on. It's an Artukic's great ball, and he directed it to the front corner. And those two working again. Four on three here for Spurs. Son, well laid off, and Putin makes a fine save. He's got it in for Eric Lamella. Mm. Troy Parrott denied on the first attempt. But Lamella is there to beat Buffon. Spurs have been the better team, and on the half hour, they lead Juventus. The foul to me on the edge of the penalty area. We play on. I believe it was. And so, uh, Pjanic, Iguain, a well worked Kentaro Iguain, pulls it. And he is a true finisher, and he's done it against Tottenham Hotspur before the Juventus show. The man back from Chelsea has made it Juventus 1. Decilio up against Walker Peters. A good cutback, and it's deflected into the net. And Ronaldo has his goal, and Juventus have turned this around. They now lead by two goals to one. And there is the iconic celebration of Cristiano Ronaldo. Which is hard to win the ball in the Juve half. And what a pass for Lucas Moura. He's assisted the equaliser. Spurs are back level against Juventus. Great work by Ndombele, and Lucas Moura has stabbed it into the net. Right, what so an so Exit. Who were unvaccinated, and 13 of them, I, I know, we're, we're all African-American. What, what, what does that tell you? Well, it tells us um, that we're seeing exactly what this pandemic has been showing us, that First of all, this is a pandemic that is not for okay, the so I'm just going to quickly go through the home menu. See all the way to the left there, we've got settings. So we've got the e-manual above there. Also, we've got quick access to intelligent mode, picture of sound modes and the TV speaker outputs or whatever, whatever output we choose. Also, game mode grayed out there because they haven't got anything connected via HDMI. Down across to the source or input smart things there so you can control all the devices and integrate them with your tv around your home search apps so i'm signed in you should be able to go to your app store there and see what other apps are available just go back again exit okay moving on samsung tv plus that's their on-demand service live tv that you've got in the background Netflix, Prime, BBC iPlayer, Disney Plus, ITV Hub, Rakuten, Discovery Plus, YouTube, all four, Samsung Health, you can do yoga, Pilates, all sorts of exercises in front of your TV, internet browser, connect up a Bluetooth keyboard, you can do basic web browsing there, Apple TV, also Apple Airplay is now built in so you can mirror your Apple devices, uh, iPads and Macs, you can also do your Android devices and mirror those as well. And my five across there, so all in all, pretty cool TV all around. Looks great on 4K stuff as well. So, as you'll say, goodbye for now.